I got shot nine times with AK-47. I ended up losing my left hand. They amputated my index and thumb, and then I have a fused wrist. You literally almost died. No, I died and even came back. At one point, I couldn't see no faces. It was just white with body shadows. You're walking into that light, and you know that it's peaceful, so you're trying to get there. But I would never, never, never get there. For some reason, they just didn't want me to go there. And this is the first time that I get out of the bed because I want to see myself in the mirror. When I saw that face and I was like, oh, it's over. Like, what am I going to do with my life? As far as physically working on a car, those days were over. Early 2015, Rick Ross gives me a call basically telling me, hey, I'm going to send you over my prized possession car. And, it, you know, with him, it was one car after another. By the time, you know, I was managing 20, 30 cars. Ross tells me one day, he was, hey, man, you know, you're like a smart dude. If you ever have an idea, bring it to the table and let's see what happens if he believed in me which he had no commitment to me he don't he don't owe me nothing and he said i'm gonna sit here and wait until you get better and you decide to work on this car i just got to it man the will to say i'm not letting this define yeah, me yeah, yeah. i'm coming back and i'm gonna better myself I've been very blessed and i don't take it for granted <laughs> First of all, like, it's been, I mean, when's the last time, I want to say, I'm trying to think when the last time I saw you. It's been, it has to be like a decade. Like, it's been a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My accident was in uh, in 2016. So I would say before, it's going to be eight years. So I would say uh, eight to 10 years. Yeah, man. Because I was going to the first location. Yeah, yeah. So when did you open that? 2008. Okay, then. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like two, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a lot, a lot has changed. I, I kind of like, you I, know, I don't really, um, I don't really follow anybody on Instagram. I'm not really, yeah, it yeah. just kind of takes you down too many rabbit holes yeah, and start yeah. to waste time and stuff. Yeah, so you I, get caught up in the... I just kind of stay in my own lane, keep blinders on. Yeah. I don't like to be influenced too much, like, Correct. you know, by the wrong thing or whatever. So, but I, so I kind of like, when you, when you reached out to me, I went to your page and I was like, whoa, like, <laughs> I was like, he's been doing it. Yeah. Like, like a lot. A lot. Like, yes. A lot, man. Yes, like yes. I was like, man, he, he definitely took on that entrepreneurial spirit and just freaking ran with right. it. Yeah, bro. So it's been impressive. I mean, just, you know, let's start there and let's just talk about what you've been up to, what you've been doing. Um, you know, this is a platform for you just to let people yeah, know where you're at, what you're doing and, and all that. So. Well, obviously you remember me from, you know, the car stuff, you yep. know, I worked on your truck, you know, when you had the Hummer, Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, so the Batmobile. Yes. So, um, and of course, you know, when you, when you first started the first legacy fit, you know, we used to go there and work out when I was, you know, able to work out, I guess. But after that, like around, uh, uh 2016, um, I had a very bad accident, which I got shot nine times with AK-47. So I was down for a while, um, recovered from that. But obviously, you know, you're not in the physical condition anymore to do certain things, of right. course. I ended up losing my left hand, they amputated my index and uh, thumb. So, and then I have a fused wrist. So it, you know, it kind of limits you to do a lot of things. Yeah. So- um, Was that a case of like, Wrong place, wrong time, or was that a hit? Or uh, like that... a robbery. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had a house in um, in Miami Gardens that I was remodeling at the time. Yeah. But I was like overloaded with cars at the shop. So imagine I had millions of dollars worth of cars right. parked in that house that really didn't look good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, it was more like, let's just rob this guy kind of, kind of thing. Mm. Um, didn't work. Uh, kind of fought back and kind of that's you know, the repercussions of of um, what happened, what occurred that day. But um, I was in a coma for like two months, granted two months, broken shoulder, uh, broken, uh, broken hip, fractured pelvis. Uh, of course, the biggest damage was in my hand and my wrist. Um, but after that, you know, I recovered. It took me like about a year and a half, yeah. you know, to kind of get uh, going again. And obviously figured out that the car stuff, as far as physically working on a car, mm -hmm. those days were over. Right. So I kind of started taking the real estate stuff a little bit more serious. Okay. 
and started investing more in real estate and kind of creating an exit plan out of the automotive uh, building part of it. Not going to eventually stop, but uh, just keep not be so much focused into it. Right. Granted, uh, in 2000, like early 2015, Rick Ross reaches out to me that I will see him all the time. I will see him at music videos. You know, mm -hmm. you know how Miami is. Yep. I will see him at music videos and, and kind of created a relationship. And basically in 2015, he gives me a call basically telling me, hey, I'm going to send you over my prized possession car. Ended up being a 57 Bel Air. Um, I started working on that. Yeah. And, it, you know, with him, it was one car after another, one car after another. And it was by the time, you know, I was managing 20, 30 cars at one time for this guy. Um, I ended up having my accident in 2016, which kind of set me back. And in 21, I decided to retire. You know, I ended up uh, building my real estate portfolio enough to where I could survive and pay my bills off of it. Mm -hmm. And I was comfortable to close my shop. So that's what I did. I finished all the projects I had. I, I you know, I cleared my name and, and, and threw in the towel. Yeah. So Ross tells me one day, he was, hey man, you know, you're like a smart dude. If you ever have an idea or anything, bring it to the table and let's, let's see what happens. Right. So I was like, man, I'm gonna take some time off. I've never really taken time off. I took a break for a year. And when I came back, you know, just in the talks and, you know, we're actually hanging out as mm -hmm. friends. And I would always invite him to car events. Hey, uh, let's go to this car show. He would always tell me, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the days that the, like the event would come, he would kind of diss me. Nah, I got, I got something else to do. And he would always kind of like, uh, just throw me off. Right. Until one day I asked them, and every time I ask you to go somewhere, you always say, yeah, but then when it's time, you always say no. And then he kind of like opens up and he tells me, yeah, I just, I want to be me. You know, I want to go enjoy cars like you go enjoy cars. I just want to be regular. Right. You know, I don't want to be bothered. So granted, he has this estate in Georgia that's uh, close to 300, uh, close to 300 uh, acres. And it sits like on a 55,000 yeah, square like, foot. It looks like a White House. Yes, correct. <laughs> So how more comfortable can I make it for you? Let me bring the event to your front yard. Right, right. And it was a joke. It was just a joke. Yeah. It, okay. And I went online. Uh, I made a flyer and I threw it online. I, he calls me like at six something in the morning one day. And he goes, hey, man, what are you doing? And I was like, what? He goes, hey, man, you posted this flyer of a car show. Uh, uh. Uh, you don't know what I have going on that day and, and, and how can you do that? And he was just spazzing. Yeah. And I was like, look, I called your sister. I got your schedule. Um, you're, you don't have nothing going on that day. So we're just going to do it. Yeah. So I don't have nothing going on that day. I, I was like, no, nah, you're free. <laughs> he hangs up the phone and maybe like a couple minutes later, uh, I get a tag on Instagram from him. Yeah. And he posts the flyer. Oh, shit. And it was. And it's on. And it's on. And what year was this? This was uh, uh, 2022. Okay, because I just saw the, yeah, the one. Yeah, on, on 22. Uh, yeah, 2022, we did the first one. Yeah, but y'all just did another one, right? Correct. Pretty we're, recently. we're on our third annual. Yeah, yeah. Correct. And it was massive. Oh, uh, bro, we sold 12. This year like we massive. Sold, yeah, this year we sold 12,000 tickets. Yeah. Plus our vendors and, and the car participants. And the cars were crazy. We ended up probably having fifteen to 16,000 people in a in a in a house right yeah like we're like, doing, a, like a car we're, house party yeah we're doing we're doing stadium numbers yeah in a private property so that's wild um thank god that 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 it's been working out and he's happy because he gets to it's more more me seeing him happy than anything else yeah but it it turned to it turned out to be something lucrative so and when you when you uh when you plan these things because i think a lot of people think you know you just said it like I posted a flyer and then it just happened. There's a lot of behind the scenes work, oh, like a no. lot. Well, you know, we 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 winged it the first year and um, we took out like a regular barbecue permit for $25. <laughs> so granted, the, the state sits on that enormous amount of land, yeah. but the streets, it's a one way road, one way this way, one way the other way. Mm -hmm. The road is not equipped to hold that amount of people and cars so the first year imagine uh, the 
the officers that we rented literally jumped in their cars and left. They couldn't, they, they were not prepared to deal with the with the amount of people that was showing up to the property. It was a disaster the first year. Yeah, the first year. Was oh, the first year show. was a disaster. <laughs> yeah. So the second year when we tried to do it again, uh, it was like all over the new TMZ. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were everywhere. Uh, they boycotted the whole thing, all the neighbors. I mean, it was a disaster. It was horrible. Oh, horrible, man. Horrible. And, uh, you know, between lawyers and uh, the 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 the. Fayetteville County uh, Commissioner and you right. know the Chief of Police and all yeah. these guys got involved. They came up with a game plan and they uh, they gave us a, a an individual that uh, he handles big events. He structures big events like okay. uh, uh, stadium events and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So he came in and they came up with a plan. We had to uh, end up renting uh, shuttle buses. Uh, we had to rent churches in in close areas to right. make them drop off and pick up points. Mm. We ended up having stations for Ubers, so it definitely got complicated. Got, got organized. Yeah, it definitely yeah. got organized. Uh, it was extremely well staffed. We were low on internet, so we had to bring internet towers to the property. Right. It, it completely changed, and yeah. it was kind of the best. And thing is it that a happened. free event, or you got to pay? For no, it? so the the cool the, besides going to his house and and mingling with him. Through the day that I think that's one of the cool parts. Um, we've done something that has never been done in the automotive. As far as competition is concerned, we end up giving away six uh, General Motors keys. Mm -hmm. So they're valued at fifty to $60,000. And we give them away to our six best of show winners. And okay. then the other classes would just get regular awards. But it turned into like this thing that every car guy wants. It's like the biggest thing. It's like having a championship ring. Really? You have the Rick Ross car show key. You, yeah. Oh my God, you have the Rick Ross car show key. I went to the Louis Vuitton store the other day and there were some guys in there and they just stopped. <laughs> look, look, he has the key around his neck. <laughs> and and they just went crazy. I've been dying to see this thing in person. It is, yeah. it's, it's unreal. Um, even the salesmen, like some places I go, it's just it's been crazy what what that key has has done for the automotive industry, and it's and it's completely changed and restructured how all the older guys and you know these big corporations mm. uh, are doing business. So that's the cool thing about it. What do you mean by that? Um, it, we don't, as far as like competitors are concerned, we don't get compensated. You know, we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on these cars. Mm -hmm. And then we go to these events, which sometimes I will have to travel as far as California. It's a $15,000 uh, trip right. for us. And then we go there to compete. Yeah, we're, we get the title, but we get a $100 trophy. Right, There's right. really no compensation for the amount of money that we spend on these cars and then what it takes to get these cars to these events. So this has been the first event that is really given back to the competitors. Okay. So these companies now, these big companies are kind of like realizing this. So they've their gifts now you see they are copying what we're doing. Okay. So I think that's cool from some guys from Miami that just it was a joke. Yeah. You know, yeah. It was just something that it was just a joke, and it turned to what it is that it has big corporations uh, changing their mindset. Yeah. They they make uh, they make gold necklaces. They make their their logos and and make them into diamond pendants mm -hmm. and give them away as gifts. So I think that that's pretty cool. It is know? cool. Yeah, 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 super cool. And what what are the plans for the, the next one? Uh, the same thing. You know, we're yeah. just trying to keep growing it. The first year we had a uh, I think it was seven thousand. Uh, the second year we did like seven thousand as well. Seven thousand cars? No, or seven thousand guests. guests. Okay, and then how many cars? And we always max out at like five fifty. Five hundred fifty cars. Yeah, because the property. Yeah. Um, we've been restructuring. And do, you, do you hand select? No, it's it's uh, first come, you first just serve? yeah you just yeah. register. Okay. And you come. Then the but the, you know we were having a problem that Ross himself has over two hundred cars, so he would put his cars in the competitor side. So this year I tried something different and I was able to move his cars to another side of the property, which gave me space, free up another 200 and something spaces. Yeah. So hopefully next year we can probably sell about 800 uh, tickets for, for car registration. Right. And of course this year we also, from the 7,000 that we sold general admission tickets, 
we went up to 12,000. Oh, wow. So we did, we did a big jump. Yeah. So I think we're pretty and then much. What, what's the, how do you judge something like that? Like well, how, I, what's the criteria? I, I, bring a, uh, I bring a judging staff okay. from, um, they're from like the West Coast, different towns, your San Jose, LA area. Mm. Uh, all these guys that they're experienced, they're just, they're competition judges. So they judge a Grand National Roaster Show. They judge uh, Riddler Car Awards. I mean, they judge real deal stuff. Mm -hmm. So I hired them and just brought them down. We stay away from it so we don't get, you know, so yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. By, you know. So it's, it's not political or anything. Correct. Yeah. So we stay away from it. Let them, let those guys do their thing. And whatever they say, that's how it's going to go. And, and then we, what do they judge on? Um, it's different stuff. Uh, paint, they judge uh, detail, how clean the car is. And there's also different classes. Mm. You know, they have like the 70s convertible class. They'll have the 50s. They have the hot rods, the low riders, the donks. It's like a Miami thing. Yeah. So it it, it varies. Okay. And then we also have uh, an award that we call the Hustler of the Year Award. It's probably, it's like, it's dedicated to like a standout guy that, that's been in business for a long time, is, has done right, don't have like a dirty name in the industry. Mm. Uh, you know, gives back, just an all around good guy that, that you know, he's just a business dude that that stands on his word. Right. So we give that out every year as well. And that's been a, that's been another, like, you know, they want that, they, you know, these guys pride themselves right, in right. that. I need that hustler that you yeah, award. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And what does Ross think about it now? Is he, is he happy um, about it? Oh, no, he's all in, yeah. you know, he's all in because, you know, he well, loves it. at his house, so he's better be all in. Yeah, <laughs> he's there in his flip-flops, no shirt. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. And then uh, we ventured off into uh, the automotive uh, car care product line that actually I like, brought you some of it. Okay. I'm going to gift you some of it. It's called Slippery Soap. Yeah. Um, this was this, uh, this nice, super cool dude named Jeremy. Um, he started the line and Ross showed it to me one day and... I mean, it matched, you know, the guy's attitude. He used to play for UM. Okay. So he's a guy from here and it just, it just, it fit. So we made a, a Rick Ross version of it and we're trying to get it into and retail. It's a, it's a car wash? Like it's, a, it's a car, soap wash. For yeah, car wash? It's, it's, yeah, soap, uh, de uh, uh, spray wax, mm -hmm. wheel cleaner, tire shine. We have the own, the dry rags. We have the, the, the tire shine applicators and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's kind of something built for us, you know? Right. You know and we're trying to get it into uh, retail stores as far as like AutoZone, Pet Boys, right. Walmart. You know, we're in negotiations now with, with Walmart. So that's, okay. like, that's like the big fish you okay. know, that we're trying yeah, yeah. to get. So hopefully this by but the what, end of what the like, year. What uh, like, I mean, other than the, the obvious branding aspect, what separates y'all's stuff from competition? I, I think it's just uh, basically the product is great for mm -hmm. one. I love it. Um, it comes like scented. Some of these uh, products, they just have this, you know, the the, the automotive smell. Mm -hmm. So what he did that was cool was he infused it with strawberry scents, uh, grape scent, uh, watermelon scent. So that was pretty cool. So it has like a cool smell to it. Plus, and it works great. Mm -hmm. You know, the the spray wax is uh, water repellent. You know, all the stuff that's on the market. Yeah. But something that for us. Right. You know, so it's it's cool and it's doing great. Yeah. And, we try to see if we where do y'all sell it now online, just slip, online? yeah slippery soap.com okay uh, we just sell it online we do online orders and it's been doing great as as soon as ross got involved with it the numbers drastically went up i'm sure yeah yeah he's pushing it like on social and stuff yes yes yeah because yeah. yeah, he's a, he's a he's a marketing genius yeah you know the guy doesn't sleep and he's just always on go so it, it's it's been great to have him as a partner you know and and the friendship that we've developed you know, it's mm -hmm. been great. So he just, we keep working. Yeah. We was he, was he one of the ones that kind of was with you during the, during the time he, you got? Yes. Shot? Yes. Um, that's why kind of like my loyalty to him as is kind of like, uh, you know, it's, it has no, no, has no description. I can't even put it into words mm. and then just give me a chance to kind of, uh, it's hard to, to take these guys from where we come from and put us in position the way he did me, you know, mm. it's to the point that sometimes I can't walk through airports, you know, it's, it's like, Oh, Hey, that's that guy. That's the, that's the Rick Ross's guy. That's yeah, Rick yeah. Ross's guy. Yeah. So, um, I really appreciate what he's done for me. So I'll, I'm always at, at his disposal, you know, whatever he needs, I got him. So, yeah. Just, I mean, something that just kind of stood out to me, like when you say where you come from, like 
Can you take us kind of through that a little bit, like where you, know, you come from? Yeah, uh, I'm basically, I was born in New York. Um, okay. My dad and my uncles and all these guys were into motorcycles and cars. So that was always uh, something that was in me. Mm -hmm. And I ended up kind of stumbling over opening up a shop. And it just kind of grew in from In New there. York? Well, no, here. Okay. I, moved, I moved here when I was 13. Yeah, here? I moved here when I was 13. My okay. parents separated at 13. All right. I ended up moving here. And kind of in my early 20s was when I kind of like stumbled. I always played with cars. Right. But then I stumbled into the sh opening up a business and doing it, you know, at a professional level. And um, look at what, you know, look at what it turned into. Yeah. You know, so. And basically, you know, the... Granted, when I when I when I first moved to Miami at 13 years old, I lived on 26 in Biscayne. Back when I moved here, this wasn't yeah, what it nah. is today. Yeah, exactly. This was a lot of prostitution, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, drug addicts that were in the street. Yep. Uh, you know, my walks to school. I used to go to Robert E. Lee, mm -hmm. and it was like uh, uh, syringes and you know. Crack bags and yeah, yeah. I mean, shit. It was still there in two thousand eight. Like okay. when I opened our street, like hookers everywhere. Yeah, correct. And crackheads everywhere. Everywhere. Well, and, imagine I mean, back, then, so it, then back then. It was, it was even, even worse. worse. Yeah. yeah, right here on twenty six. There used to be a KFC on Biscayne on the corner. Okay. Then now they knocked it down. Well, across the street was a vacant lot, and that was like a hub of you know those people doing what they would do back then. And mm. I would have to walk that thing every day. Wow, just to go to school. To go to school, yeah. correct. And I will walk through your facility because I will cross through the train tracks to go right. to school. So it's crazy. You know, I remember that when I, my mom was able to move us out of this area, I said, I will never come back to this area again. I and hate, now look at it. I hated this place. <laughs> I never want to come back yeah. around this area. And right. look at what it turned into. It's wild, right? Yes. And then the first time I really, really came back was when I went to your first uh, your first location oh yeah which is the one on the train track. yeah yeah but no it's crazy like when we get done i'll show you it's right you can, there. You can see it you, you can, can see it, it. yeah, right yeah there. correct and what's wild is so when i opened three months after i opened they found a dead body i like, remember right behind my chin i remember burnt remember to death like yeah, some girl like and i mean i was literally like what have i got myself into yes yes and then i mean we would come to the gym i would physically and i'm not exaggerating literally step over a hooker having sex with a homeless man to open my your, gate, your gate to get in. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah, I, re I, rem I, I mean, remember. I mean, that, that whole. I remember the stories. Wild. I remember the I had, stories. You know, and I'm training all these people driving Rolls Royces and yes. Ferraris and stuff. They're coming down. They're like, "What, like, what the, the hell? hell? Where have you taken us?" You know? and, and you just got numb to it. You yeah. just it was just a norm. Well, that's well. I would say. I mean, I would take it a step further. We're the ones that changed it, man. Correct. Like you know, because we, you were we the brought, first one. I, I feel like we we brought life, like real life, to that area. Yeah. And we brought lights to the area. It's like, because sure. remember, like, it, it was in a you would it turn was, down the street and it was and it nothing. Was, it was sketchy. Yeah, it was like, nothing. But we lit it up. Yes. You know, we lit up the parking yeah. lot, we lit up the gym. Yeah. And then playing music all day all long. All day. And then having those nice cars come to the industry. And then before you know it, now the cops are coming. So now the cops are, and what was wild, I'm, and I kid you not, for I would say eight years. Two cops were always at on the corner. On the corner is when I would go open the gym, like Correct. always. Yeah, because sometimes we would do like the five a.m. class. Was yeah. it a five a.m. Yeah, class? I, was, I think it was six back six. then. Yeah, that was when we used to have to run to the corner. Yeah, yeah. You remember? Yeah, so, of course. and sure the enough, stop sign run. Yeah, the stop sign yeah. run. So, um, I remember the police yeah, officers man. in no, the corner. I mean, what's wild is that. Let's see. I was there for thirteen years, and there was the dead body the first year. And then like two years after that, there was a stabbing on that street. And then two years after that, there was another death. It was wild. Yeah, it, it was, was wild. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. wild. That, that whole area. I and, and people thought I was nuts. But I knew for a fact because of the location that eventually this area would blow up. Because this is like the heart is of the Miami. Heart, yeah. It's the center of Miami. Like everything. If you think about where 395 is and 195, Correct. we're right in the middle. Yeah, the water's right here. water's right here. Everything. So... Eventually, you know, it caught you, off. So it's you, gotta be surreal for you. You got you don't you couldn't give away those warehouses in the Wynwood area. Oh, I'm still pissed off that, that, that we I didn't, didn't buy that Yeah, warehouse. we didn't reap we off. didn't reap the benefits when when we had the chance to I used to, to bring all my NFL guys there and tell them, yo, you gotta buy this building. And they'd be like, nah, man. Yeah. And the building 
that we were in, they would have sold it to me in 2010 for $900,000. What is it worth today? They're now trying to sell it for $16 million. <laughs> just, And they're going to get it too. And they're going to get it. They're going to get just, it because they're going to put a high rise there. Why? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, you couldn't give those things away. I know. You couldn't it's give crazy. those things away. Miami's, it's nuts. And one of the things that I think, like I've, I've kind of used that blueprint though for the rest of my facility. So I've been going to places you know, this one, I was probably five years too early, you know, Correct. but still it worked out. But now I'm like strategically going about two years early to places, you know, identifying the next thing, the next, the next, the next neighborhood, hot thing, yeah. you know. So we're doing that in Nashville. We're doing that in Little River. We're doing that in Aventura. Like, you know, we're, we're kind of being very strategic. Like yeah, that correct. From, and we learn from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, so. you also need to fail in, you know, in order to learn. Oh, of course. So Many failures back then. Like uh, yeah. doing the wrong thing and yeah. then learning from it. And then, yeah. So, yeah. So, I know you got other stuff going on, too. Um, I think you got a clothing line, right? Yeah, we, yeah, partnered, yeah. we partnered up. I had a buddy of mine uh, that I've known for years. And he uh, worked at a... He was a stock boy at, at Home Depot. And he ended up telling me he was going to do a clothing line. He... You know, uh, sorry, he's gonna open up a store. Okay. Okay. Like a clothing store. A clothing, yeah, All a right. little clothing store. He opened up his first location, and one day I just see him like posting these, like crazy cars, and I'm like, "What's going on?" Yeah. So I start talking to him, and then he tells me, "Oh no, everything in my store is my own. This is actually his. Okay. Um, it's my own stuff." And I'm like, "Wait, wait a minute." So I started asking him questions and he starts telling me what the markup is in the fashion, in clothes and all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, this is insane. Yeah. The amount of money you can make off this stuff. So he starts explaining to me his marketing strategies and stuff like that. And I sat on it for a while. And once I kind of figured it all out, mm -hmm. I was like, oh no, I'm bringing this to Ross. So I brought it to Ross. I, you know, kind of took us like six months to kind of do the deal. Right. And, um, so Ross. did you invest in him? No, or did you no. So what we did was, like we yeah, we just partnered own. up with them, and okay. then we created Ross his own signature line. Okay. So it's called it's called THRT denim, which is thread denim, and then Ross has his own collection, and we're trying to now we did we did the first collection, it did very well. Now we're in the works of doing the second one, and we're gonna try to upscale it a little bit mm. so we can get in, into Neiman Marcus. Oh, nice. So. It's going to be a little bit, you know, he's, it's more like streetwear. Right. But like high end streetwear. Yeah. You know, yeah. but now we're going to bump it up a little bit and, and put some thought behind it and move it, you know, Neiman Marcus and stuff like that. So that's kind of like the plan for, for 2025 Very and cool. see if we can get that going. So that's been like another cool thing. Yeah. I've been, you know, dabbling and, and I see, you. and I see he, you know, he accepts it and we go with it. Yeah. So. It's been cool. So what? What else? What else is happening? Uh, the real estate stuff, you know. Okay. Uh, my portfolio, just working on the portfolio. Mm. Okay, I've been kind of laid back, waiting for the elections to pass. Yeah. See what's gonna happen. So, but I'm anxious already to get back in, into right. the real estate stuff and see. If, do you, you know, primarily do your real estate here in Miami, or yes, are you doing it outside of Miami? Yes, or, yeah. I, I like it here. Okay. It's just you know, uh, since I do rental stuff. Yeah. It's easy for repairs and you know tenant complaints and stuff like that. You can just pull up and and deal with it right i did the stuff in orlando and that was a disaster it, it just find people to work and, and you don't know what's really going on and you right. just can't go there so i ended up cashing out on what i had going on in orlando a couple years back mm -hmm. and i'm just gonna stay here yeah well i mean you yeah. know you know the market here yeah so, and i could just and, and i can pull up and you can pull up anytime. yeah yeah, yeah. i tried That's in smart. tennessee i have some acres in tennessee but um what part I don't know. My mom bought it. My mom bought some acres a couple years back, and okay. then we ended up splitting the acres. And I bought a portion of her stuff to build like a cabin, something that she yeah. wanted to build. And um, she kind of pulled out, so I'm on the verge of pulling. I just waited a little longer, see if I can get a little more money out of it. Right. So I'm gonna pull out, cash out there, and hopefully by the time the elections uh, will pass, and invest that money here, yeah. you know, and, and jump back into the real estate stuff. That's cool. Yeah, so yeah, we're opening up in Nashville, so yeah, yeah, in 2025. That'll so be awesome. We break ground, ground in January, so it should be cool. Yeah, they, they I never, I actually, I never went there. The other day, she showed it to me on, on, you know, on Google Maps. Yeah, but 
I don't, you know, Not sure where it I is. never <laughs> went. Yeah, I never That's went. <laughs> so, um, so I know you do more than just uh, the car show and at his house, right? You do multiple car shows throughout the year. Is that uh, right? Um, no, just I. Or basically, just we do that one. Yeah. Um, we just basically do that one once a year. Um, I don't want to water it down. You know, I feel like if we go on tour, yeah, we can go on tour. But we can't sell tickets at the, you know, we sell we sell uh, entries at two hundred and fifty dollars per person. Right. Our normal car show is fifty bucks. Mm. You're lucky if you get fifty bucks. Yeah. And uh, for car participants and motorcycle participants, the most will be a hundred dollars. We charge seven fifty. Mm. Oh, okay. So our prices are are extremely high compared to what everybody else is doing. Yeah. But you get to go to his estate and pretty much, you know, who can say you're going to go to a celebrity's house and hang out for the day mm -hmm. and then have the guy physically uh, mingle with you. Right. Because he does mingle and he brings out the cameras and he puts on, he gives you an experience. Yeah. So I believe for the $750 or for the general admission that's 250 I think you're getting a hell of a, a, a show. Yeah. Plus all the celebrities that go there, uh, they're just walking around like nobodies. Right. Uh, we have the guys from the Migos come, uh, Two Chains. We had Cam Newton this year. Um, it's just Ed, Meek Mill. You name yeah. it, they're all there. Johnny, Johnny, what's uh, his Johnny, name? Johnny Dang. Johnny Dang. Yeah, Dang. Johnny Dang. Yeah. He was. He's. He always. He's. He's yeah. supported it from uh, from the first year. Okay. Um, the first year he he actually set up. Uh, a store by the poolside. Oh yeah, yeah. And then he'll um, he'll custom make you the gold teeth right there on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Like you'll uh, yeah, you do the imprint early and come back a couple hours and yeah. it was done. Um, he did a whole YouTube video on it. Yeah, yeah. I watched it. Like, not the whole <laughs> thing, but I watched some of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He he's cat. there. I mean, you name it. All yeah. the Instagram uh, influencers, all the uh, those comedy kids that do jokes and pranks and all yeah. that, they're all there yeah. and they're just, it's, it's turned like into, into like a big homie barbecue. Right. You know, like yeah. a cookout, yeah. it's, it's just what it is. And it's been great. We've, we've had a hell of a run with it, you know? So, so I'm scared, I'm scared to, to take it on the road. That's what I was trying to say. I'm scared to take it on the road and kind of water it down. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, to me, it's like you make it, you make it extremely, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like, a, it's an epic one-time yeah. FOMO event. Like That's you, it, yeah. You know, it's once a year. It's once like a year. It's, you know, That's if you miss it. it, you miss it. You miss it. You yeah. got to wait till next year. So it makes year. it, you know, And the, the money, the money that it brings into the city, you know, uh, between homes. And what part of Atlanta is it? It's in Fayetteville. Fayetteville? Yeah, okay. Fayetteville. Yeah. Um, How far is that from, from it, Atlanta? Like, like thirty 20, minutes, like twenty minutes, yeah, twenty-five yeah. minutes. Yeah, it's 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 really close. Okay. Um, and the the amount of revenue that it brings into the city, you know, so so it's helping the economy. Right. Uh, it's helping the economy in in Georgia. Not even what he's not even what it does there, but what he's been able to do. Just in the car industry itself, you know, he's been able, you know, because he he's he's a car hoarder. It's you know <laughs> that's what he is. Right. And he just continues to buy more cars and he puts them in these shops. And I have like about 20, I would say 20 shops that I can call right now and they have a car that belongs to him in a shop. So he's been able to maintain a lot of shops open and, and feed families and, and make wow. sure that these guys uh, have, have work. Yeah. So I feel like this is an event or, or an individual that this event needs, needs to always happen. Mm -hmm. You know, because it does help a lot of people. Right. Granted, it might not help everybody. Not everybody's going to see the fruits of it. But in his eyes, you know, he got 20, 30 cars in 20, 30 different shops. Yeah. And he's spending a lot of money. Right. So give back and then he gives back, you know, help support our event. And in return, you know, we give back to you guys. And mm. plus, you know, the awards that we give out, you know, it's just, it's unreal. Right. So that's why I feel like the, the, it, it's, it's just been great all around. It's just been something that's really been great and, and helped a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with him uh, musically? Is he still 
Yeah. Been, he hasn't really dropped anything in a minute, right? Uh, he dropped not that long ago a collab album with Meek Mill. Oh, okay. But I don't really get too involved in that stuff. Yeah. Um, he's not really into, you know, he does the music because he loves it. Mm. But he kind of uses that to catapult himself into other business ventures. Right. It's kind of like... Does he still have his place here in Miami? Yes. Yeah. Well, he just bought... Um, he just bought next door to Gloria Stefan on Star Island. Oh, he did? Okay. Yes. Uh, right. He bought... Um, I know exactly where that house is. Yeah. Uh, he kind of knocked the whole thing down. I was there yesterday, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. um, and he's done a like a complete renovation to that thing. So, but he still has his Southwest rent. He has all his properties. Okay. Yeah, because he, he, he has a nice uh, real estate portfolio as well. Yeah. I mean, he's on another level, of course. Of you course. know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But he has some cool stuff. Yeah. What... um. Like through this whole, you know, experience, like just kind of being, I mean, would you call yourself like Ross's right hand man kind of, or like, yeah, I could kind of, I could kind of say that, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't go on tour with him. I mean, him. not like, you know, yeah. I just, I play my position yeah. basically. So I don't overstep my boundaries. I know where my limitations are and some of the things I just don't want to do. Right. And I'm free to not want to do them. So mm -hmm. I'm not obligated to, which is great. Yeah. I, you know, I fend for myself, so I move at my own pace, and he respects that, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but he treats me like, you know, like, like we treat each other. One day you got dinner, the next day I got dinner. Right. Don't matter what it is, you know. We gift each other. You know, I gifted him a car. He gifts me, you know, a watch. I gift him a bracelet. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just, you know, so a real friendship. A real friendship. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. I, like, I really, yeah, it's I really, not, right. Yeah, and it's not, it, it's not forced. You know, it's something that's organic. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. And whatever he brings me on, you know, I just he runs it by me. If he wants me to be a part of it, he lets me know. We talk about it and, and we make it happen. Yeah. Are you still, uh, are you still like kind of the creative behind a lot of the cars? Yeah. 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 I just. Um, I just did a car for LeBron James. Oh well, yeah, that was a cool. That was a cool. Well, uh, what was it? A '63 Impala. He wanted the car for. Um, remember the movie uh, Boys in the Hood? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Well, the car that Ice Cube drove. Yeah, yeah. Well, we did like the 2023, 2024 version, version of, of it, that. and it came out pretty cool. Um, I just delivered it to him in um, in December, I think okay. it was. Yeah, but right, right before Christmas. Yeah. And it was great. So. I'm, so was that something that he reached out? No, they you? called me themselves. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was in shock. I think I hung up on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was like, LeBron. Yeah, click. Like, oh, how are you gonna call me? Right. And it happened to be real. And then uh, they scheduled a, a a phone call meeting. Okay. And sure enough, it was him. I didn't even take no money from those guys. You want it done? That's what you want. Okay. I went online. I started looking for a car. I flew off a couple places. Hey, I found the car. I sent it to them. I gave them what it cost. They agreed. So you didn't you didn't do anything to the car. You just found it. No, I it I, I no, I bought it. Yeah. And then gutted the whole thing. You so know? you did all the work. Yeah, yeah, I did all the work. And you didn't charge them? No, no, I didn't charge. You know, normally you would take the deposit or yeah, you yeah, know yeah. whatever. It's LeBron James. Yeah, I know yeah. he got it. No, right. So I just went to town. So you did it, and then yeah, they paid and for then it. yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. Well, that's you know. Yeah, so I was, it, it is, is LeBron. Yeah, it is LeBron. Surely I, he's not going. Yeah, he's not going. Yeah, he's not going to yeah, he's not gonna do that. Stiff you. <laughs> yeah. So um, any other uh, people you've worked with lately like that? You know, since I stopped, uh, I I wasn't doing it like that anymore. Right. I'm so content. I have so much work when it comes to Ross that I really don't need to do it. I'm doing it as a hobby. It's just mm. something to get me out of the house. But the LeBron stuff was cool, so I'm like, I'm gonna turn him down. Right. You know, I'm gonna take well, advantage it's once of this. A, yeah, it's yeah. Once a lifetime situation. So I did that, and um, but for the most part, I don't really. And if I do do it, I sub everything out. Okay. Uh, I pick the best guys at what I feel they're good at, mm -hmm. and I jump in wherever I feel I need to get in, and I just kind of micromanage. So it's been it's been a lot easier too. Yeah, I'm sure. So. The car world is a lot more difficult than people realize. Oh, bro, that thing like, is almost every time I've tried to customize <laughs> anything, it's been a freaking. It's nightmare. been a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, like, it's 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 something that they're the slowest human beings ever. Yeah, yeah, and if they you, never meet a deadline. No, because then you get the passionate dudes that really do it because they love it. Yeah, so you got to work on their time. You know, they're artists right. in their own in their own yep. mind. You know, and in their own right, of course. Yeah. So it. it, it 
it definitely uh it's a tricky situation but have y'all ever thought about doing any kind of like show off of this we i want it sounds like that kind of we want to do podcasts we're working on the podcast now yeah and i would like so that first episode was that with joe fat joe oh I saw what? something with no, you. No, that was just that was just a promo. Okay, that was just like a for pro, the for the car for show. The car show. Right. Yeah, so we have all these artists that give us promo uh, uh, reels and stuff like that, yeah. so we can use to promote. But um, me and Ross are working on a podcast, and then I also want to venture off into Netflix or some something like that. I want to um, give some of these guys that have the talent, you know, a little bit of shine. You know, right. I kind of want to be like an executive producer type yeah, yeah. thing. So I'm well, it sounds like everything you're telling me, like just the event. So like if y'all did, and again, I know you know yeah, this, yeah. but like if y'all did a production, like behind the scenes, the preparation, everything that goes into it, yes. you know, badass shots, people coming, people leaving, you know, people setting up their cars, yeah. all, that, all stuff, that stuff, and made it into a show? Yes. Bro, that'd be a show. It'll be a show in It'll itself. It'll be a show yes. to watch. Yes. Like, yes. I'd watch it. You yeah. know what I mean? There was, a, there was a guy this year, he actually, uh, he he did like a live. Okay. He's He has like one of those big YouTube followings or yeah. stuff like that. And he came in and there was just cameras everywhere. Uh, he, had, he did like a live stream. Okay. And supposedly the guy made a fortune oh my god yeah. no i'm telling you like yeah. one of the top things people watch on youtube is car stuff yeah, and car netflix too yeah all these car shows all these yeah. uh you know uh what is it uh raw to i can't remember yeah the yeah, the, uh, you know the rolling yeah the guy uh, uh something they rolling did, there's a bunch yeah. of different yeah, shots yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah, the yeah. before yeah. and after yeah and the gas that. monkey all, garage yeah, gas and monkey. stuff like that yeah gas monkey's probably yeah it got watered down but when yeah. it first started when it came it was on legit. yeah it was good yeah, it, was like, good. it was really good yeah so i kind of want to do that i want to do the yeah. same thing but y'all could definitely do that yeah and there's a lot of talented guys that that you know because it's, it's kind of dominated and it's sad to say you know it's dominated by by the white boys you know because they're real fabricators and and they're real metal shapers mm -hmm. and they, they they've stuck to the art of it's already a lost art pretty much but metal right you don't really find these guys that can work metal anymore right but these white boys that live in kentucky and and yeah. these weird places you know texas texas yeah they're they're extremely skilled yeah so but in our culture we're so behind when it comes to that but they're good at you know they're good at a lot of other things and i feel like they deserve a shot to get their five minutes of fame. Yeah. So maybe we can create something in the future where where we can um, put them on TV. Oh, know? for sure. You definitely and, have some. And and you know, switch. You know, get a guy from LA, get a guy mm. from Texas, get a guy from the Midwest. Uh, you know, Chicago, whatever, right. and and just make something really big that touches every genre of the car industry. As far as I'm, you know, as far as like the way I see it. Right. You said that going back and forth like loud talking and dissing other people's cars was uh, to help you be better so you can help me be better. Um, how does being competitive and sometimes teasing others help you improve and motivate those around you? Can you share an example of that approach? Yeah, I had a, I had like a guy, you know, we kind of used to riffraff back and forth. Um, but I would, you know, since I, I guess I was at an upper level, mm. you know, he felt a certain way. So, I would just kind of go at him, you know, just tease him, you know, do this, do that. You're never going to have this. You're never going to do that. Yeah, I want to see you do that mm -hmm. so I can do this. But, you know, I mean no harm by it. I, you know, I'm super respectful. Even when we're having these little riff rap, right, you know, right. I don't, there's certain things you just don't say and certain things you just don't do. There's a line you don't cross. Right. But some of these guys, you know, they can't handle it and they 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 get very personal. But um, yeah, um, I want to see new stuff. So I would diss these guys. We'll get into a little battle, whatever the case is. And hopefully, I hope that in the future you do bring out a car that gives me some type of competition and. Or made me open my eyes and be like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool what he did. Mm -hmm. So then I can steal that idea and revamp his idea. Right. So basically that's where the model comes from. You know, I'll diss you to make you better so you can make me even better. Yeah. You know, because I want to see new stuff. You right. know, sometimes you go to these places and everything gets repetitive. Mm -hmm. It gets boring. It gets, you know, it just gets stale. 
and it's and lately the as far as the the culture that I'm in that's what it's been it's been copy and paste mm -hmm. it's been it's been very stale very stagnant and I think it's time for a change you know it it, it kind of needs to already you know it needs to go to the next level it's been it's been stuck for a while do you have uh like anything up your sleeve that you feel like you want to work on like maybe uh, the thing is, since now uh, I've taken this position in the car show, mm. I have to kind of be neutral. So the competitive part of me has to stay out of the way, mm. I guess, for the greater good of the show right. and the greater good of the culture, you know? So I kind of have to like step to the side. But let me tell you, it's hard. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, my God, it's freaking hard. Like sometimes I see these cars and I'm like, man, I could destroy this guy. Yeah. But, um, Honestly, and Rick never wants you to do another car for him or I'm constantly I'm working on, you know, a bunch of stuff for him. Yeah, but not nothing on the caliber of what I want to do. Right. So it's more like wheels and tires, body kits, send this car to the paint shop it has a scratch here, right. you know, uh, maintenance stuff yeah, pretty yeah. much. But um, this year I did finally have the conversation with him and he agreed. And I was like, man, how is it that, you know, you're the top guy, you know, there is not, I don't think besides Jay Leno, I don't think there's another guy. You come second. How is it that you don't have in our culture the top, let's say dunk, you know, that that's our thing. That's mm. the Miami thing. Right. You're supposed to have the baddest dunk on the planet. Right. And he was like, okay. <laughs> so right after the car show, I just went and bought one. Okay. And uh, I'm working on it right now. All right. But I'm not showing no pictures. Yeah, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, unveil yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be hidden. Is, uh, is that his Dolphin car? The Miami Dolphin? The one? Uh, no, we did the Dolphin bike. Okay. He has, do did you? The one, I think it was this year at the car show. Somebody did a, a Miami Dolphin like car. Oh, no, no. I don't know who that is. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. You know I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit was crazy. It was like a Jeep. Yeah, it was, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. like, wow. He's, he's from... um. It was like... um. A Toyota. Yeah, it was. It was like it was a yeah, weird. Yeah, car it was a weird car. That. Yeah, he's it's a like the CJ Cruiser. Or yeah, something, he's like, from a Palm Beach, West yeah. Palm Beach, or but something it was like that. Like, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. so different that it was cool. But we did. Yeah. We did a. You did a dolphin. We bike. did a nineteen. Uh, what is it? The 1972. Uh, C, uh, I guess that's when they won their championship in 1972. Yeah, yeah. The undefeated. Season. The, undefe yeah. the undefeated yeah. season. Well, we built the undefeated well, my dad's bike. Friends played for them. Yeah, yeah, so we did the undefeated season bike. Okay. Yeah, we're just waiting on getting. You know, trying to get get everybody to sign it. Yeah, yeah. That'd be so huge. we have a tin. We have a spare tin. Uh, one of the parts of the bike we made right. a, uh, an extra one, and we've been trying to get a sign so then we can clear it and put it on the bike. But it's a beautiful bike. Yeah, it's like a hundred fifty thousand dollar bike. Wow. We had a uh, this talented guy from from Chicago. His name uh, his name is Curly Zinc. Okay. He's a a bad bike builder. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So he built us the bike. Everything. You know, uh, Miami Dolphins themed. And all the pieces are like diamond cut. I mean, the thing is a beauty. Wow. You don't even want to ride it. Right. It's, it's And what kind of bike is it? A Harley. It's a Harley. Yeah, it's a Harley. One of those big, you know, big baggers, mm -hmm. you know. But it's crazy. It sits on the floor. Has no kickstand. Is Ross ride? He rides. Yeah. Yeah, he rides. Um, I don't. The only thing I don't think he does is drive stick shift. Okay. <laughs> but he drives bikes. Yeah. Um, he drives tanks. He, you know, he has a tank. He has a. He has a tank. <laughs> he has a tank. He has a fire truck. Uh. He has monster trucks, you know. The, oh yeah, yeah, the big uh, one of those big my son, foot. My yeah. son loves monster trucks. Yeah, <laughs> and he has he has the 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 place to to actually use them. Yeah, you know? but he has a full blown fire truck in his property. That's yeah, wild. it's cool. He has a tank. Uh, he has a bunch of stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. He's just he has NASCARs. Oh yeah, he has uh, three NASCARs. Does like, he race them? They're not. There were uh, there were. Like, what do you ever think about like you know like Pibble has a well he used to have a team I think he sold it, um, Trackhouse. You know, um, like, what do you ever we, thought we, about? We had doing a, we a had team? a meeting we had a meeting yeah. with them so he ended up getting cars that were, uh, I guess not fit anymore for the racetrack. Yeah. So you know he bought them and then we just revamped them and you know they take the motors and stuff out of them they yeah. just give you the shell. Oh okay. And we bought it put motors in it. And we, he just uses it around the house. Yeah. You know, they're not they're not street legal. They right. have no lights, no turn signals. Yeah, but it's yeah. just to play around the house, and it's pretty cool. You know, he got a NASCAR. <laughs> right. <that's wild. laughs> yeah. Yeah. I so. mean NASCAR. You've been right. Yeah, yeah. That, I've gone. We, we've had a meeting. Like, we've had meetings bro, with them. 
that's a that's an experience. Yeah. I got to be in the pit. Yeah, and the, I mean when they come around that corner full <laughs> you, speed, you, you feel it. Your heart no, you, like goes crazy. You feel it. I got foot, I and they're I, like this close to each other. Bro, it's wild. Like you even, gotta have balls yeah, like yeah. this big. No, 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 no. Like, those guys. We I got footage on my Instagram of those guys. We sit there and you just see them pass by. Like I mean, and they shake you. No, it's wild. Even like you can it, feel it in your yeah, soul. You know? like we it, even did the. <sighs> did you do you see like when they bring you on stage? Have you seen that part? Like the initial part of it. Uh, oh, at the very beginning. Yeah, the very, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we walked that. We did okay, that whole yeah, thing and everything. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. That was pretty so, cool. Yeah. So and everybody's there. I mean. Yeah, the place is packed. It's hot as hell. Oh it was, yeah. Uh, the one we went to was uh, Atlanta Speedway. Atlanta, yeah, Atlanta yeah, Speedway. It was in Atlanta. Yeah, that's Atlanta, the one. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've gone down to Homestead. No, but that's nothing like for. Not for for that just that. it was, it was just uh, an actually event. a Porsche event that we okay. went to. Yeah, because they do Porsche events there, Lamborghini, yeah. and Lamborghini events there. Yeah, but yeah, that uh, the one at the at the Atlanta Speedway. I mean, when everybody's no, there, I seen a uh, championship wrestlers yeah, there, yeah. boxers. Yeah, I mean, there. everybody's yeah. in that place. Yeah. I mean, I really didn't know. They say that that's the the number one most generating sport. You know, it generates the most money, and um, I see why. Yeah. There's a lot of money being. Oh yeah, there's a wild. lot of money moving like, there. Now that I've got this beverage brand, I've looked into like sponsoring and stuff. <laughs> the sponsoring dollars in that game is yeah, it's different. Crazy, yeah, it's crazy different. different. Yeah, it's different. So, um, well, I want to go back a little bit, and if you if you don't want to talk about, it, you don't have to. But yeah. you know, like when someone tells, when someone has a life threatening, like you know, yeah, situation situation. Like, talk a little bit about, if you want, yeah, you know, yeah. obviously. But, like, I mean, for me, that's just, like, it's got to be a life-changing situation. Yeah. So, you know, when you're going through that recovery and when you're, you know, realize you're going to make it and stuff like that, like, you know, number one, how how were the challenges getting over the injuries and stuff? Because um, you said it took, like, a year and a half. Yeah, I still do. I just had surgery. uh in February, I'm constant. I do three surgeries a yeah. year. Really? Yeah. At one point, I was doing like four, four from, surgeries from a year. From pain. Yeah, pain and reconstruction, and you know stuff like that. Yeah. Trying to. They say medicine evolves every five years. Okay. So there's always new, new treatments, right. new new tricks, whatever it is, every five years. So um, I'm constantly just keeping up on it. You know. Yeah. I'm not trying to give up. I was to the point that I was going to amputate my hand. You know, because of the pain that I got to deal with. Yeah. I think it was better to amputate, but the doctors are like, man, you already amputated two of your fingers that you should have not done it, but now you're gonna amputate your hand. And I use it. The crazy thing is that I do use it. I, I can open a door. Okay. I use it to kind of like leverage stuff here but and there. But you're still dealing with a lot of pain? Yeah, a lot of pain. Yeah. 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 Is it like mostly nerve pain? Nerve, it's ex yeah, extremely. Like, let's say, you know, if you hit your hand. Yeah. If I hit my hand, it's like 10 times what, you know. So it's real sensitive. Yes, yeah, extremely yeah. sensitive, you know. So I suffer like the worst case in 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 the chart. At 10, I'm a 10. Wow. It just doesn't get any worse. And how have you handled that mentally? Like even like, you know, in the beginning. In the beginning was like, really bad. Like were um, you, did you deal with depression or yes, anything like that? Yeah. Um, and what do you feel like helped yeah. you? You know, because I mean, listen, I mean, with everything... I mean, you're in a great place right now. I mean, I correct. would say, yeah, yeah, you know, correct. right? Yeah. Like you seem like you're thriving. Yeah, yeah. You're in a great place, but you literally almost died. No, in the no, I died and even came back. You know, you know what I mean? So, well, you did die. Di then. Yeah, you got, came correct. back and came back. And I know that that wasn't easy at no, all. And then the thing so. is that that sometimes, like now that I've been through that, sometimes you have conversations with, like you know, with these guys that you see in the street that live in the street, mm -hmm. and they tell you some of their stories, and you go, oh, "This guy's fucking crazy." Right. You know, shit. Some of that shit's real, mm -hmm. you know, because I, the the stuff that I experienced in a coma, it was, you know, like it's crazy. It, you sometimes you don't want to even say it because you think, man, man, this guy's, yeah, he's not really right in the head. That, you know, it's not real. But some of that, you know, we go through when you're in a coma, um, you go through a lot. Yeah. But, Anything uh, in particular? I remember. Don't worry, I'm crazy. No, so yeah, like, <laughs> like I even remember. Um, at one point, I couldn't see no faces. It was just white with with body shadows, but it was just a shadow of bodies, you mm -hmm. know. But you couldn't see no no physical, you know. You couldn't see skin color. It was just a shadow. 
and it was just white and then the, the grayish blackish of the shadows of the people mm. not a people and you're walking 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 but you're walking into that light you know you walk and you know that it's peaceful so you're trying to get there because you just feel like free you feel like that's it this is where i want to go and you just keep walking i kept walking walking but i would never 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 get there for some reason i could never get there and I just kept walking, 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 walking. And like for some reason, they just didn't want me to go there. Yeah. They just left me walking. And at one point, um, I like this. You have bad dreams. I mean, you, when they inject you with um, all those uh, morphines and stuff like mm -hmm. that, um, I would suffer from, remember, at that time I was big, you know, mm -hmm. 250 pounds. Right. I was a big dude. Yeah. Um, so when they would, they, they per periodically wake you up. Um, so you don't fall so deep into into sleep where you can die. Right. So when they will wake me up, I'm just literally there with my eyes open. I can see you. I hear everything you're saying, but I can't do nothing. Uh, my throat was so dry that all I wanted you to just like put a drink in my mouth. You know, mm. it was just it was horrible. The torture. I'm chained to the bed. This hand is chained. Uh, they had me chained to the rail, and both my feet strapped. To the ends of of the bed mm -hmm. and then this is all broken and so they had this arm and did they do that because i was extremely aggressive okay so yeah. so you would wake up and kind of like and go crazy I'm, yeah i'm going yeah. And then uh i ended up having an infection so i swelled up really bad in my stomach so that's the reason why they had to induce me so i was induced it wasn't like i fell in a coma they okay. put me in a coma all right and um so of course I wouldn't hurt myself because I'm, I'm trying to go. I'm right. I'm still in the mentality of they're trying to kill me and I'm running trying to get away. Right. And um, then this arm, since it was so uh, damaged, they do like a block. I don't know if you ever even when you do surgeries they'll. No, I know it. Yeah, okay. I know. What so you're they saying. do a block yeah. and this thing. I don't so care you what you do. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, this doesn't move. Right. And um. So when they when I would get aggressive. Of course, they'll give you that, whatever that it, that medicine is, what you know, pain kill, whatever it is. Yeah, probably a dose of morphine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that thing hits you so, so. Now I understand why people get. You know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't weed, I don't do none of that stuff. Yeah. So now I understand why people get addicted to some of the the substance, you know, as cocaine and, and you know all these intense drugs, mm -hmm. because it does feel good, and um they will put me under and whatever emotion or my last if if i saw you last i'm taking you into my dream oh wow so i'll just continue a whole imaginary story in my dream and uh, one of them was i don't know what it was but um i'm talking to my mom and they were like oh um don't worry about it you're gonna be fine I'm like, okay, whatever, cool. She's like, yeah, because your grandmas, both your grandmas are here. So I'm like, what? She's like, oh, yeah, they're already in surgery room. They're going to take the parts out of their body to put it in your body so you can live. Wow. And I'm like, what? I said, like, yeah, but, but, but my grand, they're dead. Right. They've been dead for years. Yeah. She's like, oh, no, no, they have like this new thing that now they can bring dead people back to life. And I'm like, bro, what? And I swore, like, listen, I swore, I swore, I swore that... I had body parts from my grandparents in my body, my both my grandmas, <laughs> and I will say that, yeah, man, yeah. do I got my parts of my grandma? Yeah, like it was, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was horrible. Even at one point, I seen my sister last, and of course, they gave me like that shot of you know whatever it is to put me back down again. And since they had me, I was trying to get loose. Mm. I was stuck in a cage with my sister, tied together, like we had got like kidnapped. And I couldn't move because my body was, um, you know, tied to the bed. But in the dream, I was just in a cage that I couldn't move. And I was stuck with my sister. And then the, that they were injecting me with heroin. And that's the reason I didn't have the strength to get out of what I was trying to get out of. So that's now I suffer from claustrophobia. I, re, I hate tight spaces. I don't like people behind me. I'm super like... Yeah. I do not. I yeah. Don't need it, though, so. yeah, I do not like tight spaces anymore. <laughs> I never have. Yeah, no, no, it's it's horrible.
So I, I have like, like when you go to concerts, I gotta have like my own section. Yes, my own like getaway. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, well, yeah. I can't, I can't be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's really bad. Yeah, that's why like um, even when Ross invites me on trips or stuff like that, I don't really go because I will hate to have an episode, you know, and kind of like embarrass him mm -hmm. or, you know, just not you know it's just not a good look. So right. sometimes I, yeah okay oh I'll go by myself. Yeah, we need to go to New York. At what time you need to be there? At what venue? Yeah, I'll okay, meet you there. I'll yeah. meet you there, right. and I'll just go on my own terms. Yeah, you know, I'd rather just buy my own ticket and and do it on my own. Yeah, so I I won't spaz out or go through my episodes, you know. So, but it's not easy, man. It's not and how easy. long? How long did you say you were in the hospital? Like dealing um, with that? I was in the hospital like three months. Three months. A long. And time then I remember. To go those I remember. Different emotion. Rich, rich, rich the barber. Yeah, yeah. He calls me. He's on tour with uh, Chris Brown at the time. Okay. And he finds out that I'm awake, so he 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 manages to get a hold of me. He's like, "Hey, bro, listen. As soon as I get back off tour, I'm there. Yeah. And I promise I'm gonna give you a haircut because you gotta look crazy. I don't. This is already not when I'm up. That's yeah. it. I'm you know I'm up. I'm right. I'm already stable. I'm people visiting. I'm eating. Okay. And um, so I was in bed that whole time. He comes to see me, he gives me a haircut, and this is the first time that I get out of the bathroom, I get out of the bed because I want to see myself in the mirror. So they get this contraption machine because I have a broken uh, hip and my pelvis is shattered, my stomach is uh, is wrapped because it's all open. Right. So they get me to the bathroom, but I'm in the chair where I can't see the mirror because the mirror is too high. So I tell Rich to get somebody and can grab me by the arm so I can see my face. Yeah. Oh, bro. I was 250. At that time, I was 142 pounds. Whoa. So when you went in, you were 250. I was like 245 to months, 250. You lost like 100 something pounds. So when I saw my face, I remember like this cheekbone. It, like it was all this was yeah. sucked in you see the jawline i mean the jawline was super sharp you see like this whole bone you, you, i mean it was just bro yeah you can grab my shoulder like like you could pinch the whole entire shoulder like this it was like very small and i was like oh it's over like when i saw that when i saw that face oh it's over i'm done mm -hmm. like there is no way like what am i gonna do with my life like it's over and I remember they were going to say I was going to walk with a limp. You know, uh, you're going to be fine. You're going to be able to walk, but we don't know how you're going to walk. You know, we don't know that yet. That's on you. And boy, all those emotions start to to, to roller coaster in your brain. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I would. I remember when I got out of the hospital that I was at the, I was in my mom's house uh, recovering. I would cry, like literally in tears, like like literally cry cry just sit there and cry and cry and cry and cry because mm -hmm. i was like it's over like no girl's gonna ever want to date me i'm amputated i can't work i can't make money where am i gonna live uh, i'm gonna lose everything right. it, yeah i had assets at the time but i'm already thinking of liquidating okay so i'm gonna liquidate this and it's gonna hold me over for a year and eventually i'll liquidate this and that'll hold me for two years and that's you know that's what I was thinking, but I was like, okay, but what's going to happen in 10, 15 years mm -hmm. when I don't have nothing? What am I going to do? Right. And um, yeah, it was, I ended up falling in depression. Like I wouldn't come out of the house. I mean, it was, I mean, it was horrible. So what, horrible. what, what changed it? You know, how um, are you able to get out of it? Bro, just one day I just, it was like, nah, like it's just, it's, this is just not going to happen. Like this is not going to happen. I'm going to turn this around. I started, um, I remember I would tell my doctors, like, let's do this surgery because I know that if you do this surgery, I'm going to do the therapy to get myself right. So the doctor would be like, no, I don't think that's a good idea. No, you're going to do that surgery. Let's mm -hmm. get it done. And I promise you, if you do me this surgery, you won't regret it. And my doctor, okay, let's do the surgery. And boy, that recovery... <laughs> yeah, I can't even imagine. When they got to do those massages and all those scars are super tender. Right. Oh my God. And I just sit there and eat like, yo, go ahead. Just, just do it. I remember I had a, 
You ever heard of a wound back a wound vac machine? No. It's a machine. Um, it's like a suction machine. So they left my hand open. The the skin was just raw and it's supposed to heal by itself. But since the hand was so infected, what they do is they take like a sponge. Mm. They wrap the sponge and they seal your entire hand or they, they seal the entire scar, right? They pinch a hole in it and they stick a, a hose. You turn the pump on, the pump is just pulling all day. So what it's doing is pulling fresh blood out the scar to rejuvenate the scar and pull out all the infection. The blood goes into like a little tank or reservoir uh -huh. and you empty out the blood when the canister fills up. What happened is they will come every Monday to the house to change the bandages. So you're a week with that sponge in your hand tied, strapped down in a vacuum seal that is completely airtight, which is compressed to the T. Yeah. When that lady will come to peel that sponge off, off that raw skin. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I would notice after a while, I remember I told her, yo, I'm going to go to the hospital so you guys can inject me with morphine mm -hmm. so you could change this bandage. Right. And they were like, oh, no, that doesn't happen no more. Once you're out of here, you can't come back. So I'm like, yo, bro, I can't do this. Like, I can't do this. Right. Like, you're crazy. But I remember the lady would bring a jug of uh, saline water. And she would, oh, let me wet it a little bit. I'm like, wait a minute. So I was like... I can I can uh, wet this with water. She's like, no, you have to wet it with saline water. Uh -huh. So I'm like, okay, so get more saline water. She's like, oh, well, your insurance doesn't cover it. It only covers this amount. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I'm like, listen. Um, so as I can pretty much submerge this hand in a bucket of saline water? Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah. I called everybody. You're right. Listen, stop at every medical supply yeah. store and buy all the saline water you can find. Yeah. I had like a wall of saline. <laughs> I'm sure. So, so I made a bucket. I made like a, a contraption because then, you know, I have no... At that point, I couldn't do this or this. Yeah. So it was a, it was a crate. Now I can do this, but I, back then I couldn't. So the, the posture was always wrong. That's why I ended up having a shoulder problems. So we made a contraption to where I could submerge. I have to use a lot of water, so I was I was misusing a lot of water, but mm -hmm. it, it kind of helped. And I would submerge my hand two hours prior to the lady coming, and I would let I would just submerge it in there. Yeah. Oh, when the lady came, it was fucking cake. Yeah. But, bro, like God, the like the first month, I yo Friday when Friday came, I was a nervous wreck. Oh man, it's tomorrow Saturday, yeah. <laughs> and, and then it's Saturday. Oh man, tomorrow Sunday. And I knew at seven in the morning that lady was gonna show up. And it was just torture. I mean, it was torture. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Yeah. And um after after the fourth week, I got smart, you know, and I was like, okay, I figured it out. Yeah. But bro, the 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 So you had to do it four times before you figured it out. Oof. No, I would cry. Yeah, like, I'm sure. And, and how long did it take? Uh, it took like three months. No, no. How long did that particular procedure take? Yeah, by the time they took the machine off, yeah. After I got out of the hospital, it took three months. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oof. No, it was horrible. And then I had a pick line. It's another another yeah, procedure. No, I know. I, you know yeah, the pick yeah, line yeah. part. So I had that as well. Mm. So I would walk like I'll be in a wheelchair because I was in a wheelchair, and then you know, so I have the vacuum, the wound vac machine, which has these hoses and contraptions, and then you have the pick line. Right. So you got hoses coming out of everywhere out of your body. So people will look at you like. Like you're like infested with, with some type of disease. Right. So imagine people were like scattered from me, you know, they're like, I don't want to be around that dude. Mm. So, you know, all that stuff mentally breaks you down. So I wouldn't even want to go out, like go to the hospital, take me back home. Right. To hospital back home. And I had to go to the hospital damn near every day. Yeah. I would have to get up at like five in the morning every day to start the process of getting ready, which takes two hours because mm. it's not get and go uh to shower it's another nightmare you know i needed help i mean bro it was i mean it was torture it was horrible everything was like help i couldn't do nothing by myself and when do you think the for you like the when did you feel when was the moment you felt like you got your life back um 
And actually, before that, what was the driving force for you? I know you said you just said, you know, I'm not going out like this. But what do you think that driving force was to get your life back? Really, to be honest with you, Ross has a lot to do with it. Okay. Because uh, was he like checking in on you? He and- always he always checked on me. And then when I was finally up and around that, I say, listen, man, I'm, I'm going back to work. You know, I'm not working, but I'm going to be at work. Yeah. And um, he tells me one day, he's like, I was, hey, man, I'm thinking, hey, do you want to take your car and take it to somebody else? Because I don't know when I'm going to finish this thing. You right. know, I, the way that this is looking, I don't even know if I'm ever going to finish this car. Mm. And that's not what he said. He tells me, hey, bro, forget that car. You're going to finish the car. And whenever you're ready and whenever you decide that you're ready to work on the car, that's when we're going to get back on the car. Ain't no rush. So I felt like he obligated me to compromise or promise to finish that car. Right. So if he believed in me, that which he had no no ties to me, he had no commitment to me he don't he don't owe me nothing right and he said i'm gonna wait like i'm gonna sit here and wait until you get better and you decide to work on this car i gotta do it so i gotta gotta figure this out yeah and that was pretty you know that was pretty much it pretty much i got on my grind i you know just started hustling again just just moving and and getting back out there um you know i took my therapy extremely serious um, what helped you get the weight back on? Just eating or? Yeah, just eating. Yeah. No, I was taking um, uh, one of like those protein little, shakes. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot those little chocolate things. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, I was just, and I would eat, like, bro, I don't care whatever it was. Yeah. Just give it to give me. It to me. <laughs> I, every, I would wake up at night. So I wasn't sleeping too. That was another problem. Yeah. And um, I would just get up at night and just eat, 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 eat. I made it to 215. Yeah. In like six months, seven months. Oh, wow. But, you know, uh, messed up weight. Right, you know, right It wasn't right. a clean just weight. But weight. I, but I needed, right. to, I needed to get yeah, up. Yeah, no, that if was you were 140, crazy. Lord. And um, I remember I was sitting in my bed. I couldn't, you know, they wanted me to, I couldn't put my arms up. I mean, it just, it wouldn't go. So they're like, hey, you lay in your bed and you try to touch the headboard. And I will sit there. I mean, cry until I touch that headboard. Every day, every hour. That I was at the house, I was do the position and try to hit that headboard. Mm. I got to get this arm to touch that headboard. This one, I got it quick. Because the thing was, since I was um, pretty much paralyzed for so long, your legs don't work. You can't walk. You, I mean, you couldn't do nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, nothing. You think the easiest thing in the world is put one foot in front of the other. Right. You couldn't do that. I couldn't do it. Yeah. The... I would put my foot down and I, I could never lock my knee. So now I understand some of what these athletes go through. Like, hey, you know, when they hurt themselves, it's not easy. Right. So I, 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 I definitely I learned a lot in the medical field. Like I'm pretty much a damn nurse at this I point. Bet, yeah. yeah, I learned a lot. But um, I just got to it, man. I really got to it. I, I set a plan. I put a plan in motion. I knew that car building for me was damn near over so i gotta find another route Mm. and i started focusing on real estate let me just buy enough real estate to where i can generate enough money to cover my expenses and cover my bills and then um i started getting confident i started dating again i wasn't even dating like i would just run from women i was so embarrassed um definitely extreme low self-esteem um I wouldn't come out of the house like I told you. I was just go do my necessities and come right back home. Um, and I just started little by little. Started dating again. Uh, started going back out. And then when I retired, um, I just Ross was like, "Hey, you know, if you got a plan, you got you know an idea that you ever want to do." And that's how that then that whole venture started. And that's kind of really giving me back that full confidence of being who I was back then. Right. And probably even more now. I was about I'm, to say, I'm, a I'm, new I'm, version of you. A new yeah. version. Yeah, because it. I've I've been uh been very blessed uh since my retirement from from the car stuff. Yeah. And I don't take it for granted. You know, and and 
And I've also, I even, I even watch you. I, I do watch you a lot, you know, and I understand a lot of the stuff. You know, you're a perfect example because I've seen you from the beginning. And to see where you're at today, bro, you know, I commend you. Like, you know, you're a good dude, man. Yeah, man. I've seen it from the beginning. Yeah. And, you know, like I passed by here and I saw that story the other day and I was like, damn, you know, he did it. Yeah. You know, he did it. And I remember, you know, you're, you're like an aggressive dude and, you know, you're intense. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> those episodes that, you know, I remember those episodes at, at the first location. Yeah. And, boy, it wasn't for nothing, man. You know, you had that vision. Yeah. You know, you've had that vision. And I'm, like, happy for you, you know. I'm, st I'm super, super happy for you. You know, Joe's still around, you know, like, you even maintain loyal to your guys, you know. So I know guys come and go, but... Joe's been there from the beginning, mm. so, and to see him still around, you know, it's pretty cool. It also shows, you know, it shows a lot of character. Yeah, man. So. Like, literally, uh, you know, the location in Kendall was for Joe. It was yeah, literally yeah. for Joe. Yeah, like, yeah, You yeah. know, go do you, yeah. have your own place, and, you know, make it your own, and, you know, he's building a nice community there. And yeah, I see that. He's living there now. And has <laughs> new baby boy. And, I see that. I yeah, see so that. I uh, see that. Yeah, yeah, he's doing great. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's it's you know, guys like you, guys like Ross, you know, Rich. You know, sometimes he's a little crazy. Sometimes I get <laughs> mad at him. But for the most part, he's doing great. You know, and, and he's still moving forward. You know, so I get to see stuff like that. That that I see these guys flourish. You know, why can't I do it? You know, of course. So, so that's well, I, mean, I, I just like your story is incredible. The just the will to say, I'm not letting this define yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming back and I'm gonna better myself. Yeah. And I mean, I would say, like, you know, you gotta give yourself even more credit. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hearing your story, I mean, a lot of people would have given up, a lot of people would have played victim mm -hmm. and you oh yeah people you know what i mean yeah like, especially of, in that you know a lot of people in your in that situation probably would have been addicted to painkillers yeah. in a wheelchair the rest yeah. of their life fat slob you know yeah just even not doing even anything, even you know? the even the painkiller stuff like i told you i don't i don't i've never done uh any heavy drug in my life yeah i don't drink you've never seen me have a an alcohol you've never seen me do this stuff right i've never smoked a cigarette yeah and um of course not I, missing anything on that so. no yeah so <laughs> when when all this stuff happened you know they put they put you on those pain medications and i remember i would get a prescription for a month and i would notice that it would last me the month cool right mm. but now at the fifth or sixth month it only lasts you half of the time it's the same amount but you're consuming it in half of the time by the time you know it it only lasts you a week so you're building up a tolerance yeah, and you're no, building up sure. an addictive pattern. Oh boy, I cut that out. Yeah. I do surgeries. I don't, I yeah. thug it out. Right. I live with the pain. I'll spend those three or four days crying mm -hmm. in pain at home. Okay. Until I get over it. But I'm not going to sit there after everything that I've been through and all the stuff that, that I've had to overcome now to fall short and become addicted to, to a drug. Right. No, man, you're crazy. But it gets people sometimes. You know? I, and I understand. And I was yeah. even telling you about the morphine part yeah. when they will give it to oh, me in the hospital. It's certainly understandable. Like you, you feel said, like you're floating on air. Amazing. <laughs> I had this kid, crazy story. I had this roommate in the hospital. He was a, a, a he was addicted to a methadone. Okay. Okay, he was addicted to methadone. And he ends up injecting here. And he did something wrong where this thing exploded. I mean, it, he had like a big old, I mean, the thing was disgusting. Oof. So they rush him to the hospital. He's my, my bedmate or roommate, whatever you want to call it. But he's from the street, so he hasn't showered in forever. The room smelled like crap. I'm having a shit fit. They have counselors in there trying to uh, counsel him to, he's not having it. I had to call two of my buddies. Hey, man, listen, bro. Grab this dude and do what you got to do. Yeah. But he's going to take a shower or he got to go. Yeah, yeah. And after that happened, that incident happened, he did go take a shower. He tells me, hey, by any chance, would you have a, a, a razor blade? Mm -hmm. I'm in the mood to shave. Yo, go buy him whatever he wants. I got him cleaned up. Um, 
And when I got him back together, the kid was extremely smart. And he would just tell me these crazy stories. And um, like a year later after he left the hospital, I'm shooting a video with Ross in Bayside Park. Two homeless guys walk around me. I'm looking at him and I'm like, man, I know this guy. And I'm looking at him and I just, I can't figure it out, bro. I just cannot figure it out for the life of me. And then he turns around and he's like, Freddie? He was like, I remember you. Wow. And after that, you know, I gave him some money and I try to talk to him and I try to mentor him. And every time I see him, but I'm getting better, I'm getting better. I will run into him at the grocery store begging for money. Mm -hmm. And um, to the point that he died. Mm. So I'm like, man, I'm not going to end up. This kid had all the talent. He had the brain. He had everything to be great. The kid was extremely well-spoken. He just couldn't control the yep. addiction. Yep. And I'll tell you, I used to see him everywhere. I would get off, I would get off the exit and he would be panhandling right there at the traffic light. And I would always give him money, always give him money. And he would promise me, man, I, I'm going to go back home. You know, one, I'm just going to go back home. And he wouldn't go, he wouldn't yeah. go, he wouldn't go. Until one day I found out that he died. And I'm not, I think I'm going to fall at this after everything that I've overcome, right. fall, you're crazy. You yeah. got to keep going, man. Oh, heck yeah. You got to keep going. So. Well, you're doing it, man. <laughs> so I appreciate you doing this. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's stay in touch, man. You already do. Yeah. And uh, if I can help you with that podcast too. You know, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going like, to. Like, so I'm not really. That's a no brainer. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a no brainer. And then like, don't overthink it. You know. I, that's all the you thing. Need is two mics and a Two and mics a, and, and a camera, camera. and it's go. All good. And yeah, just, yeah. 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 I mean. What I would say, the first thing I thought of, because I thought it was already done, is, uh, I mean, Fat Joe is literally one of the greatest storytellers mm -hmm. ever. Yes. Just get him and Rick, Rick Ross oh my God. on a show together, and that alone would be, that would be the first episode. If yeah. I had to tell you do the, how to launch it, yeah. Joe no, was, and Rick just that was even, telling stories. That, that was even like, would be great. like at the hospital. They were like, man, like, who are you? Because I would have like rappers come see me, yeah, ball yeah. players yeah. come see me. And I had Joe, like, you know, Joe yeah. checked, you know, FaceTiming me, yeah. you know, so Joe too, man. Joe's a super, Joe's one of the super, sweetest, nicest, yeah, bro. genuine. Still to this day, he like, tags me on Instagram. Guy. Yeah, he's like, a super humble dude, man. Like, you know, I can't get him in the gym to save his life. But, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but he's a dude. Yeah, he's dude. a cool dude. Yeah. Rich is doing good in no, the gym. No, Rich is doing really good. Yeah, he's super, yeah, he's, he's doing good. A, it's funny. I got guys sending me their shirtless pics. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, why do why do these dudes have to do this? I'm like, I'm like, don't yeah. be sending me that. But yeah. no, but he was showing off. He's, yeah. he's looking good and doing good. So yeah, it's it's awesome to see people, you know, where they were and where they are to, to where they transitioned. You know, to, yeah. like going through the different obstacles and setbacks, and mm -hmm. then coming out on the other side of it. So yeah. seeing here you here today, you know, telling your story is is what life's all about. Yeah, man. and just uh. You know, I think there's someone that's going to be watching this that's going through something similar. You know, that's, whether it's a car accident, bike accident, a sports injury, yeah. you know, something where they feel like it's over. Okay, yeah, I get you those know? messages a lot. Like, hey, man, you, you changed my life. You touched yeah. me. But, you know, the things that you say, the things that you've been through, I thought I was the only one. Yeah. Oh, man, there's a lot of people that that are going through stuff. And some of them keep it in, you know. they don't They don't really let it out. Yeah. So I'm glad that I've been able to come out of my shell too. Cause you know, I've always been reserved. You know, well, most always, men, we don't, we don't like to, you know. Yeah, yeah, we've, we've, I've always been know, reserved. We play the tough guy role. But so. I've been able to, to get out of that shell and kind of like let people know what I went through. And, but you need to, like yeah. people need to hear your story. Yeah. Because I'm telling you like, it's such a powerful story of resiliency, of resilience of like, coming out of it yeah you know you went through hell and yeah but you made it and made it and yep. now your story is only begun you know correct like and i feel like yeah come. like i feel like i still haven't done anything no like, i mean neither have i yeah like i, I feel swear. like, I, have, like I'm, I feel like that all the time i'm like man so, I, uh, it's like why I have, not yeah you know? i haven't done nothing here what, exactly. what, like what i i got like i got more to do yeah. yeah i have more to do we got to live this life full like correct. and we have to leave an impact and leave a legacy and leave something you know, that people can, that we're leaving that they can better from. Correct. You know, because if you don't 
then what's what's the what's point? The, yeah, what's, what's the, the point? point? Yeah, what's the point? So. No, you're absolutely right. But um, like I said, man, it was great. You know, it was great. I've been like I've been watching your stuff for a while, and I'm like, man, I, yeah, you know what? Let me just hit him up and see no, what he I'm says. Glad you did. Yeah, I was like, let me see. So I was like, I'm glad that I came. You know, I'm glad we chopped it up. It's been a while. I need to get back in the gym. I do my little things at home. Yeah, you know, I made little contraptions straps and stuff on my hand mm -hmm. but since i'm by myself i don't get motivated enough to do it you know it's like i can definitely i mean that was one of the things i was thinking mm -hmm. about over here like you know what what you're able to do and stuff and mm -hmm. then also there's a lot of stuff even from a, a like a anti-aging um, life hacking biohacking mm -hmm. type stuff that mm -hmm. i can you know talk yeah. to you about and help you with too because so. people even see me they're like man f f you know you you look great. What are you no, doing? You look great. Yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, and I'm like, I don't great. even work out. I don't. Yeah. When I'm probably well, gonna you know, go on a date, I'll just do, bless with those. Genetics, yeah, so. <laughs> I woke up like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, if I'm gonna go out on a yeah. date. I'll go do some some yeah. dips or something. You know, I so manage. You, so, you, so you uh, you don't have a girl? You still dating? I'm dating. Yeah, yeah I'm All still right, dating. Single lady. Yeah, I'm right, still dating. You know? um, it's hard, man. The dating pool. I is, can't imagine dating now in Miami. It's horrible, bro. I just put some crazy. I don't even want to touch that yeah, subject. Yeah. No, no, Let's just leave that alone. Episode, so. Yeah, that's another episode. Right. That's a whole thing. I, I got some gifts you, for you too. Okay. So, All right. you already know.